وقت هون بتقدمها لزميلتي شفاء ابو سعد ابو سعد انا ما بعرفش وبالتالي بعطيها الميكروفون نستمع للحديث الاول تفضل شكرا صباح الخير وان شاء الله نستفيد اليوم زي ما استفدنا امبارح حدثنا اليوم شينا زمجد شي سينيور بابليك سيرفنت ان ذا ساوث افريكان جفرمنت فور ذا بوست 18 ييرز شي وركت ان ترانسفيرنج ذا بابليك سيكتور لاند ريفيو ووتر افيرز هاوسينج لوكال جفرمنت اند هيومن رايتس هير سبجكت و شود بي اباوت ذا ساوث افريكان ميونيسيبال سيستم اند ذا بيت انفايرمنت بروفيشن eradicating service delivery package and building professional capacity since 2000. So, with that, she has. I want to say that there is a favorite translation, so if anyone wants to use it, there is a favorite translation. For those who don't understand Arabic, uh, there is live translation. Uh, you may pick up the units from the back of the phone. I greet all of you very, very warmly on behalf of our South African delegation here. We are a delegation made up of seven representatives of our South African team and we are very, very honored and pleased to be here with you today. Um, this feels to me um, like a long-awaited pilgrimage to come and meet our Palestinian brothers and sisters and comrades. I was very moved last night when Minister Alconi was saying we're more than uh, just friends because of the bond that South Africa and Palestine, and Palestine share, because of our common reality, of our common struggle, um, of our struggle for freedom, freedom from oppression, um, and for a free and independent Palestine. We share that dream with you. We are also coming here to share with you some of our experiences as we share our 20 years of freedom um, as South Africa right now. And you would, you would be familiar with the quote from our own hero and your hero, uh, Madiba Nelson Mandela, that said, we will never be truly free until you as Palestine are free. So, well, <laughs> beyond geography. None of us is completely free from the struggle over geography. That struggle is complex and interesting. It is not only about soldiers and cannons, but it's also about ideas, it's about forms, it's about images, and it's about imaginings. Edward said when he wrote in 1993, culture and imperialism. And with that said, we would like to share with you our own journey to date. It's a very young journey. And this is part of our very, very recent history. We had post signs up during the apartheid era that said whites only, like here, Palestinians and Israelis only, for certain demarcated areas. And we are coming from a municipal governance which was racially, racially based, it was fragmented, it was grossly underdeveloped, it was very control oriented, the movement of people was central to that, and it was a local government system that was unaccountable to the people. We have come a long way with transforming our governance, our local governance system in South Africa. In the years before the year 2000, there were over 1,000 racially based local municipal authorities. There is now what we call wall-to-wall -wall system of new municipal 
municipalities have no capacity in place. Right? So I, I, I need you to really uh, see that. We had a, a national census, population census in 2011, and what that picture revealed is that our people, our citizens are on the move. They are choosing where to live. They are moving and migrating where they can access better services, better health care, better education, um, better quality of life. That's what we all are in search for. And our nation is on the move. And this, this statistics really show that our people are exercising their rights as free citizens to choose where they want to live, a right that was denied during the apartheid era. So despite the profound pressures that we have on our, our eight metropolitan municipalities, we, we, one of the achievements that we had as a free government to date is that most of our residents have up to 90% of their basic services met. And we are very aware of that 10% that is still underserved and that we are needing to give further urgent attention to. We as a country, for the first time in our 20 years, have now adopted a long-range development plan for the country. And we call it the National Development Plan, and it sets out a vision and a plan of action for us about what becomes possible for us to achieve by the year 2030. And one of the challenges that this National Development Plan um, speaks to is saying that we've got to operate and function as a more integrated government. We've got national government, provincial government, and local government. And to date, we are not working as well as we should. And the development suffers if government does not operate in the most coherent way. That plan also has rolled out a very significant infrastructure investment program for the country. And this is our major thrust that is pushing um, a number of developments. We are investing to the tune of about 4 billion rand in infrastructure development in South Africa. And that goes, you know, is testimony to the importance of the role of municipalities and government overall in delivering on this infrastructure development program. In addition, you know, we are saying all of these development planning ambition and the vision for 2030 that's outlined in it, it happens in a municipal space. So you cannot divorce the national ambition from the local space and where that needs to play itself out. So we are realizing that it is fundamentally important that in order for us to achieve the national vision of a developed South Africa, We've got to ensure that each and every local municipality is developed, is capacitated, so that it can contribute to the national agenda. We've got a lot of development challenges, my dear sisters and brothers. We've got huge developmental challenges, particularly in rural areas. Uh, when you come and visit South Africa, and we, you know, we would love to have each and every you know, Palestinian brother and sister come and experience and visit South Africa um, so that we can return the hospitality and the warmth that you have consistently given to all of us. You would, you would not be mistaken when you see very, very large disparities between our rural areas and our urban areas. You might be saying, you know, we're living in two countries. Um, that is just the reality of some of our development challenges. We've got the greatest amount of backlogs in water, in electricity, in telephone connectivity lines, sanitation, and these are concentrated mainly um, in rural areas. Now, we are realizing that all of our municipalities and most of our municipalities have and are required by law to have long-term strategic plans, to have integrated development plans, right? And some municipalities have more sophisticated planning capability and have, you know, plans that make sense, that speak to the future that we want to create. Um, and other municipalities that are still struggling with that. 
And it's important, this is one of the key realizations that our national development planning is saying, we as a country, we need to think consistently long term, so that it's not just planning for this year and next year, but so that we look more long term and develop the capability for managers at municipal level at every part of government in order to be able to execute um, plans for the long term. We have a serious need for technical capacity. You would know we are still suffering from the backlog that has been created with an unequal, unethical, you know, uh, education system that did not prepare us for the future. And almost 50% of our municipal managers have a postgraduate degree with, you know, one in three having a master's degree and even fewer having a PhD. And I was just so impressed with the caliber of knowledge that the Palestinians have. You know, I, if, if, I would love to know the research of how many PhDs you've got because, you know, you, you, we, we, we still very far behind you on that front. So what that is saying, we don't have the level of technical know-how, qualification, skill and experience in order to do justice to our development agenda in South Africa. Having 50% is not good enough for where we need to get and at the, the, the speed with which we need to move development forward. We are also realizing that 50% of our technical service managers do not have an undergraduate degree and this is our major risk factor here. Now you can imagine entrusting these managers that don't even have an undergraduate degree with the total asset value of the infrastructure that they need to manage, make decisions on in a municipality. Now if I don't know what I'm doing and I'm in charge or charged with such an awesome responsibility, it's, it's no, it doesn't take a great stroke of brilliance to know that I'm going to mess up. I'm going to make uninformed decisions. I'm going to really cause the institution um, to, to suffer. And that is what we are seeing. Um, the quality of decisions in, the, in this reality um, leads to our, our infrastructure not being maintained. Uh, planning for the maintenance around infrastructure is neglected. Budgets for infrastructure maintenance, you know, gets easily used up for other less important things just because there's not that technical know-how. And part of our partnership between South Africa and Palestine that we will tell you a bit more about in, in just a moment is to help to respond to this very, very important um, risk factor that we have. We've got a severe shortage of technical and specialist skills due to the inadequate you know, uh, generation of skills and also large numbers of our current uh, technical skills managers in municipalities are retiring. So we've got a huge gap. There has not been a focused program, and this is an area where we failed, a focused program to create new generations of technical managers that can take over seamlessly when others retire. So we're sitting with a major crisis, uh, a technical skills gap and a specialist skills gap crisis. This is an interesting picture. This shows the number of planners we have in Africa per one million people. And in South Africa, we've got about 40 planners to one million South Africans. Now clearly, that, together with the ambition of driving a development agenda, is not going to get us there. And we want to appreciate that this work has been done by Michael Sutcliffe and Sue Bannister from City Insights. That's part of our, our delegation, this data that we're sharing here with you. Now, a big part of our work in South Africa is around the urban agenda. We realize that urban areas face huge, huge development challenges and that 63% of South Africans are currently living in urban areas. And it's a reality that you cannot ignore. It's a global trend and we need to respond to it um, in realizing that our cities are actually 
the drivers of economic growth. And we need to ensure that our municipalities and the capacity of those municipalities respond to what cities need to do to drive the economic growth for the country. But also not just cities that's economically strong, cities that can foster social inclusion. We also predict that by the year 2030, about 7.8 million will be 7.8 million South Africans will be living in cities, and by the year 2050, a further 6 million people will have moved to those cities. The National Development Plan, you know, also recognizes that we can no longer get away with a very simplistic argument of saying, you know, there's the rural-urban divide. It does not help. It does not help from a policy thinking perspective. It doesn't help us to solve our urban-rural challenges. <clears throat> but rather, we have need to shift ourselves to a more uh, productive, a more constructive thinking about saying, thinking of the rural and urban as a continuum and how the two are connected and how the two 